I was um, talking to the girls last night and I told them what today's topic was going to be and um, that it was, you know, tips and things um, that were like helpful, you know, and I said, what do you think was something that was like really helpful, you know, on your end of it that like now you're an adult and like, yeah, that helped. And I thought one of the greatest things I did was give them a list, detailed instructions, break it down. And you only had to look at one part of the list, number one, and you just do that. Don't make it too big. Just do number one. If you get to number two, great. Yep. But then when they went out into the world and asked like their boss for a list, they're like, well, I told you what your requirements are. Like I told you, <laughs> you're going to have to write your own list. <laughs> So that kind of backfired, and I thought, I just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> it's not funny, but oh, I'm like, so that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> but I guess, I guess like a tip for somebody else would be, <clears throat> if your kids, if you do a list for your kids, then teach them how to make the list. But that's kind of the thing, though, isn't it? Like if you have like ADHD or whatever, and that kind of the thing where it's hard for you or, you know, other other challenges, isn't it hard to break things down into steps? Yes, very so, difficult. And I, don't, I don't know that I could have gotten my kiddos as teenagers or preteens to stand next to me while I thought through, like I thought out loud, the process of breaking things down into a, a list. But Maybe that's something to try. Morning, Chrissy. We started without you. I mean, we didn't start without you, but we just started. <laughs> feeling like really no, good. you're totally fine. You're good. I um, I was listening. I just had to braid my kid's hair because every day is um, it mayhem here. And I that's why I don't normally start till 830 because usually between eight and it's like the witching hour, eight between eight and 830, where like something <laughs> typically falls apart, like the dog will pee on the floor or a kid will throw up or I'll get but I they normally they all ride the bus and they get on an 823 so or 723 so I'm good but today the little three missed the bus the oldest has a doctor's appointment so she didn't get out of bed because her dad's taking her but then dad can't do her hair so you know normal day over here I set up my alarms and I tell I I make it talk to me, so I put in like a whole sentence. So it's like dot dot dot. So this morning it says, "Get up, you have to start work. Like be ready by 7:30." And all I could hear in my sleep was like, "You're half, you're half something." And I'm like, "What am I? What am I? I'm waking up. Like, what am I?" <laughs> you're like, "Excuse me, what? I'm insulted." <laughs> yeah, I insulted myself. <laughs> it was something like a half wit or something. I thought I was saying myself. I'm like, "What?" Wow, I'm really judgy this morning. Yeah. It's like, geez, Siri, I thought we were friends. <laughs> I love that Melissa gave that tip before to set um, set Siri up to, like, talk to you and tell you what to do next with your kids. And um, I love that you do that for yourself. I should do that. Mm -hmm. I should totally do that. It helps. I have it does. alarms it all day, same, like just all day long, the alarm goes off and it has like a note with it, like yeah. pull out chicken, yeah. flip over laundry, don't forget to put in this case note. Yeah. Stand up, <laughs> walk <that> around. <laughs> don't try. Right? <laughs> yeah. Is that a <clears throat> do, you that, do you think that's a work from home tip? Do you think that that's a... Um, do you think that that's just a, a life hack? Do you think that that's like a mom thing? All three. What do you think? All three. Yeah. All three. For sure. Like I have one and now it's annoying me. It's set for 2.39 in the afternoon and it's daily mindset to like reset your mind and focus, you know, to finish the end of your day. And every time it goes off, I'm like, stop it. <laughs> You're like, well, I need to get rid of that one. Like, get out of here. I don't want to. I don't want to hear that. Okay. Yeah, that oh, one's okay. annoying me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Mine's uh, my 320. That alarm gets on my nerves because that means the kids are getting off the bus and then <laughs> mayhem will ensue again. <laughs> Maybe you need to set yourself a 310 alarm that says enjoy your last few moments of peace. <laughs> I For like real. that. Yeah. For real. I was thinking about getting myself one of those clocks. You know how, um, I, I don't know if you've seen them anywhere, but they sell them there. They count down time. And I was thinking that maybe I need one of those. Oh, that sounds neat. Yeah. They talk about getting those for kiddos in school so that it helps them maybe with transitions. It's, yeah. it's set and it'll be like, I guess, red or something and then it gets shorter and shorter and shorter. I don't know. I have this I have this thing um with red. Peyton knows if we use red in any tip sheets or anything, she's like, "Whoa, this is like a this is a big deal because I've red for a lot of family members. It's just not a the happiest of colors. It you know, brings up some kind of emotions of, you know, um so I didn't know that that red getting shorter and shorter might, if it was in different colors, maybe I would be okay with that. Maybe something a little bit more tranquil, purple, green, blue, you know, a little bit more relaxing maybe. Um, but yeah, I was thinking about doing that just for myself because, you know, we have deadlines, so many deadlines all day long. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the worst time for me is time in between things. So this ends but then we have something else that starts at 10 o'clock or you know like and there's maybe like 45 minutes in between and i always kind of feel like well i don't have enough time to do this so i don't want to get that started and so for me that always feels like just this no man's land of time because i don't feel like there's a whole lot of time to get stuff done. So maybe I need to start a list of short things that I need to do, like little snippets, mm -hmm. so that I don't have to think. I could just go over to that. What are these quick things that I could do? Because the last thing I want to do is get into my email, and then that just throws the whole day off. Oh, yeah. You think, I have time to answer one. And then you're like, oh, boy, this one and that one. And then this got involved, and they answered right back. And you're like, OK, so now that's progressing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely uh, can de totally derail my day, totally derail my day. So every year around spring, I just get it in my head that it's time to wash all of like my, my down comforters and the couch cover and all the couch blankets and all the pillows. And it's just been hanging over my head. There's a beautiful laundromat not too far from my house that is i mean it it is like beautiful and it's just easier to take all your big bedding stuff it into one giant washer and just do it all at once and i don't mind doing it like i said it's a gorgeous place to go and sit there wi-fi it's fantastic i just can't get there so laundry hacks let me hear it um like with the kids what had started as like my biggest aggravation, and I'm sure many parents are like this, you go in, they either have a hamper and everything's beside it, and then there's this stuff over here. Well, that stuff's clean. This stuff's dirty. Trying to figure everything out. Um, biggest problem with my females was the fashion show they felt they had to put on before they actually wore what they were going to wear. So everything's out. And then my boys everything was inside out and then there was very random things in the pockets like i could empty a girl's pockets no spiders animals rock sticks <laughs> sharpies like nothing crazy in the girls pockets boys hmm, like take years off my life like to feel something like oh that's a squirrel tail you know that's a bunny tail that i had you know whatever um oh i was fishing and i had that worm so I decided they were going to start learning how to do laundry and we were not going to stop until they knew how to do laundry. After going from point A to point B that it was done and it was satisfaction, like, okay, they can do this on their own. Nobody put their clothes inside out. Nobody strew clothes and tried on 25 different outfits because they were the ones washing them. <laughs> so it was like, Honestly, in my household, it was life-changing. 
but we had to, I had to do it one-on-one -on -one with each one. I had instructions all over the laundry room. What they were not allowed to use was bleach. If they were washing a load of whites, they had to come and get me because that's just asking for trouble. You know, they could, and I had to switch from liquid to powder because, you know, they would squeeze and squeeze and miss the cup. And, you know, it just, it was a project to actually learn it. Um, when you lift up the washer, there was like a clipboard with very detailed instructions of what each setting was on. Like I drew pictures. Um, they each had their own laundry basket. Like they were responsible for that. They had to start it and finish it. They weren't allowed to just leave it hang out. And then the next person comes in to do theirs and they're like, well, so-and-so still got stuff in the dryer, you know? So it was a lot of responsibility for them. And honestly, I started this when they were 10. By the time they were 12, they could do it independently. But it wow. took two solid years of working on it, working on it. I just thought, I can't do laundry forever. For four kids, this this is too much. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So, and they're all different ages. So this happened at you know, when they were 10 and moving on to 12. So um, they also got to watch the older ones do it. And they felt like they wanted to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now it's kind of funny, you know, to say like, well, you really want to do it. You know, you couldn't wait till you were old enough to do it yourself, you know, because you've seen everybody else doing it. Wanted to be a big boy, you know, that kind of thing. But um, it was only like in the last two years that I actually removed like all the labels all the signs for everything like okay most of them are out of the house everybody knows what they're doing and um one of the kids had come back and they're doing laundry they're like where's my list I'm like you still need the list like i didn't think you needed the list i would left it up he's like no i just didn't know like did you throw it away I'm like well yeah <laughs> I threw it away did you want to keep it <laughs> But it was kind of cute that they actually like relied on that and used it and followed it, you know, try to make it make something that was overwhelming me into little bite sized pieces they could learn and do. And it didn't happen overnight, but it was like in my head, it was like this big hope that we'll get to it someday. It, it will be happening. And it was honestly one of the best things I ever did for myself. <laughs> It was teaching them a skill that they greatly needed to have. Probably not at that age, but it it just made a huge difference for me that I didn't have to regulate everything everybody was wearing and empty in the pockets. And uh, we were very successful. <laughs> Nobody ruined appliances, so <laughs> that was a bonus. <laughs> I think that's the trick. That I think starting while they're young. And maybe, <clears throat> maybe the best thing was like the younger ones watching the older ones get get to do it, and yeah. then maybe they kind of want to be able to do it because oh no, well you could do this, but you're not old enough now, and so maybe it's that that waiting and the older ones get to do it might might be the trick. And like for learning how. I, and I kind of started backwards, was here you have this fresh, clean laundry. Where does it go? So we started with labels on all the drawers. This is a sock drawer. This is a shirt drawer. This is for jeans, shorts. This gets hung up, um, just like with that idea. And then we work backwards of how did we get here to have this? So I didn't have them start doing something like really hard. It was just little things to, to where they knew. And I'm telling them why we're doing this. You are going to learn to do this on your own. Like you will start with your dirty clothes that you threw on the floor and bundled up and you'll fix that. And at the end, you're going to have these clean clothes and you're going to know where to put them instead of like, take the, take the clean clothes and put them away. Some of the kids are like, put them away where? Where would you like them? <laughs> you know, like they needed more details than that. Um, and even I would say at the age of even like 16, 17 years old, 
the younger ones would have like friends over and they're like, oh, your drawers are labeled. Like, and they could have took them off. Like I tried taking them off. They're like, no, I like that. I like knowing where they go. And they left them on for the longest time. Um, my husband's like, don't you think those need to come off? I said, if they're happy with it and it helps them, I don't care if they stay on there forever, you know, but, um, I just think like that for me, that was something that was very, very helpful. Instead of standing there crying over laundry, like I'm going to be doing this forever, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Oh, laundry so bad here. Um, and my husband never learned how to do laundry because his dad was still doing his laundry and putting his clothes away when we started dating. And then I went right into doing it when we moved in together. So he's never done a load of laundry in his life. So I think that you really did your kids a solid. And I have taught mine, um, boys and girls, pretty much how to run everything, even though mine are little they could still load the dishwashers, they can fold towels, they can do whatever. My oldest can pretty much do everything. Actually, my eight-year-old kind of can too, but the boys still are learning, but they're little still. But I want to make sure that they go out into the world with all of the skills that maybe my husband didn't get because his parents did a lot of stuff for him when he was at home still. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons why parents do for them and help them. Um, and sometimes it's just out of love. It's not realizing that they will be adults and go out and have to do these things. And I wanted, like my biggest goal for all of the children was that they would be self-efficient. If they chose to be with somebody or have somebody in their life, it was because they wanted to, not because they needed to. One of the kids had said really young, like was talking about cleaning or cooking or something. He's like, oh, my wife's going to do that. I'm like, okay, so you're like nine. You don't have a wife. <laughs> you're going to have to do this. And you may have a wife who says, I'm not cooking for you. <laughs> you can cook for yourself, you know? Um, but like thinking a little bit ahead of them going away to college, being in their first apartment, you know, it's not that they got to learn everything at a young age. But I think there's a huge thing that a gift to, that we can give children that they feel part of their environment, that they feel like they have a stake in what goes on in the home and that they're part of that whole functioning culture that we have at home. Uh, I think that's important. Uh, I agree. I agree. I'll tell you what, my kids were really good at doing chores every day. I mean, they had a minor kind of chore. Um, until I started working from home. And then I think it became this idea of, oh, well, mom's at home. And probably maybe more my mindset changing, like, well, I'm home. Um, so if I could even go back in time and tell myself to not do that, like in my house, chores weren't chores because I needed something done. Like, I do not need to argue with you for 20 minutes to un unload the clean dishwasher. That will take me <clears throat> like four minutes. You're doing it mostly to contribute to be part of the household and have some pride in, in where you live. But um, my son was going to camp. And uh, as I was reading the camp stuff that they send in advance, they said, you had two choices. You could either send your child's clothes out to be cleaned or they could do their own laundry. Well, my son was going to camp and maybe he was like 10 or something. And I was like, I am not sending a little boy's underpants out to a dry cleaner. Like, no, thank you. Plus camp was like a, an arm and half of a kidney. So I started teaching him how to do laundry just because I'm like, you're going to get there and you're going to have to do your own laundry. Luckily, when he got there and he was young enough that they did have somebody do the kids laundry, I guess. But he knew how to do his own laundry after that. Funny story. Send him up to camp. It was maybe like the second or third time he was there. And um, they call me one day from the nurse's office uh, that he has a weird rash. So they're going to take him to like a Med Express kind of place. <clears throat> Come to find out, he ran out of body wash and decided laundry detergent was just <laughs> So in case you're out there wondering, you know, they all kind of feel like soap. Could you use laundry detergent as a body wash? The answer is no. 
No, oh, you're not. My. Oh my, poor guy. I bet that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would imagine, I would imagine, but I guess with a kid thought, I could totally, they're both soap. And, oh, yeah. and the soap on, yeah, I mean, I get that. I, I get could that. see my little one doing that because he'd be like, right. but it's still soap. It, I wear the clothes. Like, I could I, see I, it. Yeah. I get the logic. I do get the logic. Yeah. Yeah. My problem is when I put things away in drawers, they're gone from my mind. So my. Underwear drawer is fine. Having an underwear drawer is fine. Um, and I guess socks are fine. But I put clothes in my closet and I have my closet organized by like pants and then shirts. And then it's color coded. Super easy to do when you wear like three colors. So it's like, here's the blue section. Here's the black section. Here's the gray section. Right. Not a problem. But I get so confused by like I open up my closet and I'm like, Somebody put these clothes in here with tags on them. What? When did that happen? So it's always kind of a kind of a surprise. I tend to wear the exact same clothes. Like you know, I if I hang them on the back of my closet, there's a hook. Maybe I don't get to put them in the closet because I'm not in the mood to color code as I'm putting clothes away. I don't know. Or you know, like maybe I threw a shirt on for like ten minutes and then like put it back on the back of the door those are the clothes i wear over and over again because they're like at the top of the pile so i can totally see how for some people putting clothes away is just like they're gone oh, yeah. you know something um haley had my daughter sorry my daughter had found one of the things we do for storage um we don't we live in old houses they don't have a lot of big closets so we switch out our seasonal clothes like 100 percent, everything gets put away the next season stuff gets brought out so we store stuff in totes in those bags that suction down take the air out she found um qr codes you can put a label on this box and you pull it up and you can see pictures of everything that's in. You can either do pictures or you can write, you know, this is what's in here. And um, it is the neatest thing. So she goes down and scans instead of going down the rabbit hole of what's in this box. And, oh, maybe what's over here in this one, what's in that one. And you know, we store a lot of different things, seasonal dishes, and you don't have like all your picnic stuff out all winter with your, you know, holiday dishes or whatever. But um, those QR codes are the neatest thing. And you just use an app and you can get them from Amazon and they stick right on anything. And you don't have to like go down the rabbit hole, as I say, because I'll start looking through stuff. And then I'm like, oh, two hours passed and I've gone through everything. Now <laughs> I got to put everything back and do all this. So one of my goals is to get those cards, those stickers, and just be able to find what I'm looking for and not open everything. <laughs> That's super smart. I wish I was that organized because that is super smart we live out of clothes baskets here shoved in closets because i just can't get any farther than that uh, it's different it's different when you have little kids it oh, is yeah. i mean do, if you have little kids do not judge yourself by oh. like don't don't be hard on yourself when other people talk about stuff because especially when you have so your, your girls are close in age and your boys are close in age and your younger son is going to grow into his older brother's clothes. And there may be times when you can't really tell them apart and like the girls socks are socks and maybe shorts are shorts. And and so if you have younger kids, my biggest the the biggest thing I can say is don't don't be hard on yourself. You know, if you just throw them all in a basket and they pick. You know, that's fine because there's so much overlap. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. I and they're heard. clean, you're, you're a rock star. You're a total oh, yeah. rock star. Yeah. They wear each other's clothes, so it doesn't matter. But then the boys share room and the girls share room. So as long as the girls' clothes end up in the girls' closet and the boys' clothes end up in the boys' closet, and as long as everybody goes to school clean with, like, out dirt under their fingernails and – they have their homework done like i don't even care they don't match sometimes she don't care my eight-year-old dresses herself she looks insane like right now she looks insane didn't care dropped her off was like bye have a good day you don't stink that's cool 
that's, that's you're exactly wearing clothes. <laughs> yeah. Melissa, I have to tell you, you are now going to be like my my idol in my head. One one year, because you know, I, I moved from this huge house with, you know, tons and tons of storage, so much storage, to a smaller house with no storage, to like an apartment with I, I think I have like two closets. Um, I mean one nice closet, but still two closets for a whole house. Um, one year I put all of my summer shoes away. So summer came and I didn't have any shoes. So I had, I went out and I bought shoes. And one day I, cause you know, I love Ikea. I'm like the, the Ikea spokesperson. Um, they have these really great shoe things that, you know, you tip down, you put your shoe in and I have them in my bedroom. And I don't know, randomly one day I decided to open them and I was like, Oh my God, look at all these shoes I have. I have these beautiful shoes. So um, I need to set, if I do something like that, I would probably have to set an alarm for myself and be like, hey, maybe go check some of those bins and stuff. I have um, storage underneath my, my bed, a whole bunch of storage underneath my bed. And um, my younger daughter was here and she said to me, she was like spending the night. She was here for, you know, Christmas, the holidays, whatever. And she's like, uh, pillows, two pillows. And I go in my room and I'm like rooting around for pillows. Like, where's my, she leaves. And like two weeks later, I pull this beautiful bin out from underneath my bed that has all the bedding that you would need. Sheets, a pillow, like squishy, nice, great blankets. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> So I organize myself and then I totally forget they even exist. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, those, the things you're talking about from Ikea that tilt out, we use those by our door too. Like one of them's for shoes. The top one, I keep the dog treats in and Me like too, yeah. and stuff like that, that it's like right by the door. I love those things. I know they're great. Yeah, so if anyone ever feels like bad about their organizational and they're like, oh, I wish. Yeah, I, I am your cautionary tale. You could be like super organized. Everything would be great. I wouldn't have. There's like an entire side of my closet that I don't generally open that side of the door except to get the iron out and the ironing board. And I hate to iron. So that entire side of the closet is completely dead to me. Every time I have to go over there, I'm like, Oh my God, look at all these clothes I have on this side. Amazing. The only I, times I, I try to be organized, I lose whatever it is that I am organizing. So it doesn't matter. Like Christmas stuff, <laughs> we've lost so much Christmas stuff that I have a feeling when we move, like we're going to have to just like donate bins and bins and bins because every year I buy new stuff because I lost the old stuff. So, yeah, no, I'm not great at that. I'm a needs to be seen kind of person, which is why stuff just stays in black baskets and drawers and yeah but now i have this picture in my head that melissa has created where i could imagine because especially when my kids were little and they all wanted to have birthday parties and so you know you go out and you buy um the little grass skirt because this time the theme is like a luau or a beach party or something that would have been great to have this list of everything and know exactly where it was and what you had. And I could even picture like, that would be great because you could plan all of your whatever right from your couch by pulling up that QR code and seeing exactly what you have and kind of going along with it. So, so yeah, I had, now I have this picture in, in my head, Chrissy, let's you and I get together and we'll find a time and we're going to schedule Melissa to do an in-depth training for us <laughs> on how to do all this stuff. And then we'll brainstorm ways that once it's done, we could like set reminders, you know, like early November. You do, in fact, I could picture it now, the little note coming up on my, on, on my uh, phone or on, you know, at the bottom of my computer screen, I'll be in a meeting and it'll say, you do have Christmas things. You don't have to buy anymore. <laughs> 
<laughs> do not buy any more Christmas ornaments because you have 767 in, 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 in a tail. Oh my gosh. Don't worry, Melissa. Since you're uh, only a county away, when we move, I'm going to be like, hi, you know your friend in Washington County? She really could use some organizational help. For sure. For sure. I'd love to. I love doing that. Honestly. Oh my God. I love doing that too. You call me. I will. I will have oh, someone I will. on it. I will call both of you and I will invite you over for pizza, which AKA means come help me organize my stuff. <laughs> there you go. The, you know, the only problem is to be a hundred percent like upfront with you, you are going to totally forget that it even exists. <laughs> So it's it's not the organizing, it's the post organizing. I had this pair of shoes and I don't know why they got cheetah print on them. Little boots. I thought they were the cutest thing in the world. Got them the next winter. I can't find them. Like I just don't know where they are, so I bought another pair. I ended up with three pair of the same shoe because I liked them so much and could not remember that I had them. And I ended up having to give two sets away. But um when I realized like all three, like, what, where, where, why did I do this? Like, this, <laughs> I must have really liked them and could not remember where they were. I love that. Um, hey, like, I, I'm going to, I'm going to give like a shout out to Chrissy, the ultimate uh, multitasker. Are you getting your, are you doing the hand signs in the background to be like, her medicine <laughs> list is on the refrigerator. Don't forget to take <laughs> her lunch and drop her off at school. It's my oldest kid. Um, she took her hair out of the braid that I just did, and she's complaining that one side doesn't look like the other. Um, and I'm telling her she looks fine. Um, because normally I don't have kids here at this time of day because they're at school, but I have one here right now. But you were talking about shoes. I was taking my shoe off also because I have three pairs of this shoe. The identical <laughs> back shoe, I have three pairs. Um, because of the same thing, I would like lose a pair and be like, no, I need my favorite shoes. And then I would rebuy them from Kohl's and then I would find the old ones. So I have I have like the bummy ones, which I have on right now. And then I have like mid-level ones and I have like nice ones if I'm doing something nice. <laughs> All right. Well, with the fact that Chrissy has to redo braids and I have been playing with Bear on the side here because for some reason I'm not sitting at my desk, so I'm not at work as far as he's yeah. concerned. So I better go let him out before I have to start my day. But thank you ladies for your time. And let's get together again next week and talk about something else. And if you're listening and you want us to talk about a topic that, you know, is important to you, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Bye ladies. Thanks for your time. Bye. <laughs>